Thanks for joining us for our second advanced lab for the training series, using UN Biodiversity Lab to monitor the pulse of the planet. My name is Amber McCollum, and I will be your facilitator for today's session. Before we get started, I wanted to highlight a, very, a few very important logistics to ensure everything runs smoothly. Simultaneous interpretation is available from English to French and Spanish and vice versa. Our presenters will be speaking in English. Thank you to our interpreters, Marissa Martinez, Diego Rodriguez in French, Thais Pedro, Sharon Wol Wolitz in Spanish for being with us today. To activate interpretation, you can click on the interpretation icon at the bottom of your screen and choose your preferred language. My colleague Andres is dropping a screenshot of this into the chat. We suggest that you choose one channel and stay on it for the duration of the session to avoid technical issues. I would also like to recommend both speakers and participants speak slowly as this greatly assists our interpreters and supports the flow of conversations. Hi everyone, uh, bonjour à tous, je vais le redire en français pour que tout le monde puisse comprendre. Veuillez um, activer votre interprétation si vous voulez entendre la traduction en français. Aujourd'hui, on a plusieurs de nos interpréteurs, uh, interprètes pardon, avec nous. On a Marisa et Diego en français, Thaïs et Sharona en espagnol. Donc, n'hésitez pas en bas de votre écran Zoom, vous avez un bouton interprétation. Si vous cliquez dessus, uh, vous pouvez avoir le choix soit en en anglais, soit en français, soit en espagnol. Et je vous conseille d'aller sur le canal en français si vous voulez entendre l'interprétation en français tout le long. Et je passe la parole à Cassandra. Eh, muchas eh, gracias, Marion y Amber. Ahora toca el turno del español. Entonces, eh, les resaltamos que tienen ustedes interpretación en simultáneo disponible. We have simultaneous interpretation available from French and Spanish too, and our interpreters. Our speakers will be speaking in English, so we do thank our interpreters, Marisa Martinez and Diego Rodriguez, who will be doing the French interpretation, Thais Pardo and Shona Wolkowitz will be the Spanish interpreters. Thank you so much for joining us today. In order to activate the interpretation, you click on the interpretation icon which is found at the bottom of your screen, and you select the language of your choice. We suggest that you stay on that channel during the entire session to avoid any technical mishaps. And we do ask the speakers and participants as well to please just speak in a, a we could say a little bit uh, slower, it doesn't have to be too slow, but the idea is to help the flow of the conversation conversation. Uh, we're going to now uh, give the floor to Amber. Great. Thank you, Marion and Cassandra. Um, so I'd like to pause here to ensure everyone is okay with interpretation. Can you please give me a thumbs up to ensure that it is working for everyone? Thank you all so much. I also wanted to highlight a few other things. If you have technical issues, including with interpretation, send a private Zoom message to my colleague Andres or send him a WhatsApp at the number on the screen. We posted these into the chat. He will help you resolve any issues as quickly as possible. Um, so please do, do not use the group chat for um, your technical issues today. Your microphones will be muted during the sessions, and this will help to ensure that um, everyone can hear our speakers clearly. If you'd like to ask a question, you have two options. You can type in your questions into the chat box in English, French, or Spanish, or during the discussion, you can virtually raise your hand in the control panel. Then we will open your microphone during the discussion segments for today's session. You can ask your question in English, French, or Spanish, 
However, we ask that you ensure you are on the correct channel so that interpretation can proceed um, smoothly. And then finally, we encourage you to rename yourself in Zoom with your name and your country so everyone can see where you're from as well. For this training, we had two types of sessions. We had our intermediate sessions that were held on the GoToWebinar platform. These sessions consisted of lectures and case study examples. And in the one and a half, intermediate, one and a half hour intermediate sessions, um, those we, we already had those, they were held on April 14th, the 21st and the 28th. And all materials can be found on the course website. Um, so we have all of the recorded videos, the um, uh, PDFs of the presentations and all the information available on the course website. This session that you're in right now is also the second of two labs that we are bringing to you via Zoom. We are presenting in English and we have our simultaneous interpretation in French and Spanish. I also want to encourage you all to type your questions into the chat along the way, and we will try to um, get to as many as possible um, during our um, discussion um, sections of today's session. If we do not get to your question, you can also email myself or my colleagues at our website at our email addresses listed here. For all three of the intermediate sessions, we had one follow on homework um, and that is available on the course website now. So if you did attend the intermediate sessions, do go to the RSET website and click on the link. It's a Google form that you'll have to complete by um, Thursday, May 12th. So you have a little bit of time to complete those if you'd like to receive a certificate of completion for the course. Um, and in order to receive that, you had to um, attend all three live webinars and then complete the homework by the May 12th deadline. Um, for the larger intermediate sessions, it will take uh, quite a bit of time to process the certificates. So do please wait about two months to receive your certificate of completion for those three intermediate sessions. For this advanced lab two, you are required to do, uh, uh, you are required to do three things to receive the certificate. First, you should already have completed the homework assignment one before today's session. Um, if you didn't, we can talk through that later on. Um, and then second, you must attend the live, um, this live session. So you're already completing that requirement as well. And then finally, there is a homework assignment two um, that you need to submit to support at UN Biodiversity Lab by May 18th. So you have two weeks to complete that second homework as well and send it to our team via email. So here is a general overview of the intermediate sessions. Um, note that we've already completed these, I mentioned this previously, but if you missed any of these, all of the materials are available on the course website. We have recordings of the sessions and the materials and they will continue to be freely available to everyone. So do please take a look at the website for those. For today, we will be focusing on mastering the UNBL secure workspaces, which provide this deep dive with hands-on exercise in how to use these functionalities. Similar to last week, I'm joined by our lead trainers, Di Zhang from UNDP, and Oscar McDermott Long from UNEP WCWM. We also have um, Marianne Margago and Cass Cassandra Losa, who are our interpreters today, and they are both from UNDP. 
We are honored to have all of our um, participants and partners here today. Um, throughout the training series, we've had such great participation from many folks, and um, we're really happy to continue that with today's session. So this session will begin with a review of the homework assignment one, and this was required to participate in the session. For this homework, you were asked to register on UNBL. So if you did not register in advance of this session, you won't be able to complete any of the exercises that you have that we have planned for today. So this is really key for your participation in this session today. Um, if you're here today, but you have not completed that step, we will try our best to accommodate you. Um, please message my colleague, Annie Vernig, and she will try to get you added to our UNBL workspaces for this session. So that's a very important point. <laughs> Next, we have the chance to explore several co-led exercises which will take you through various functionalities of our UNBL workspaces. For each, the UNBL team will walk you through the steps and then we'll have time for you to work through the exercise on your own and ask questions as they arrive. Please note that for all elements of this lab, we will be closely following the lab instructions document that we shared in advance of this lab. So we really do recommend that you have this lab document open and on your screen so that you can follow along and take advantage of the working sessions. My colleagues, again, are sharing this information in the chat. So now I'd like to hand it over to Di Zhang, who will start us off with a review of the homework. So over to you, Dee. Hi, everyone. I'm Dee from UNDP. It is such a pleasure to be here with you today. This is our last live session of the NASA RSET training on the UN Biodiversity Lab. We will have a deep dive of the workspace functions and really help you to practice uploading your own data to the workspace today. But before that, as you may learn from our training on UNBL Workspace last week, since the workspace is a highly secured working environment, only registered users are able to access this function. Therefore, in our homework, we have asked you to create an account with UNBL, and I believe most of you have already done that. If you haven't, don't panic. You can even give me a thumbs up to let me know how many people haven't registered yet. For those who haven't registered an account, please get started now and follow my demonstration to complete this task. This is to assure that you all have access to the workspace we will be using throughout our exercises today. All right, now let's get started. If you're at the home page of UNBL, click on the data tab and then select launch to access the data app. Once the page has loaded, select the account icon on the top right corner and choose sign in. In the sign up page, click on sign up and enter your email, set a password, your name, country, and institution, and then read UNBL's terms of use. If you agree with all that, click on the checkbox and then click on sign up. Then you will receive an email within a few minutes. Follow the instructions in this email to verify your account. Once your account has been verified, you can log in using your email address and password you created to access the platform. We strongly suggest you to use the same email address you used to register today's advanced lab session. If you just finished registration, 
please send a message to my colleague Annie with your email accounts. She will be able to help add you to the workspace we will use later. And if you need technical support, also let us know. All right, next, for everyone who already registered before the session today, we have added you to the training workspace called NASA RSET. I will now show you how to access this workspace. Please also take this chance to double check if you can find this workspace under your account and everything else works well from your site. First, please make sure you have logged into your UNBL account and the email you used for login is the same one you used to register today's session. If so, click on the map view on the top of the left panel and when you click on it, there will be a drop down menu. On the top, the one called UNBL is the public platform. Under this, you should be able to find a workspace named NASA RSET. And then at the right side of the workspace name, there should be an admin button to click. When click on it, it should bring you to the administration page where you can see a drop down menu with all these options. Now, please give me a thumbs up if you can find this workspace and your scoring looks similar like my here. These are all the important steps to help you get fully prepared for our exercise later. Last but not least, please also pre-download a sheet file to your computer. I am sending this link to the chat. We will use this file to practice adding new places to the workspace at our exercise today. And above are the preparations we need for the exercises today. Now the floor is yours. Do you have any questions? Does anyone need any help? Great, thank you so much, Dee. So now is the time for questions for um, this portion of registering, logging in, and accessing the workspaces for today's session. As a reminder, all of the detailed steps are in the lab sheet, which my colleague Andres dropped into the chat. And we have about 10 minutes for questions to D, and we want to be sure that all of you have been able to log in and access the workspace for today's session um, in order for you to continue to participate with us in this lab. So as I mentioned earlier, feel free to raise your hand um, or to add your question to the chat and um, we can monitor that as well. And as a reminder, if you just registered now, please send a, mes a message directly to my colleague, Annie, who can um, try to help you get added. So D, it looks like there is one question in the chat I can see. Um, it says, my workspace doesn't allow me to add layers. Can you help? I don't know if we'll yeah, so we will go through. Yeah, we'll go through this exercise right, um, right after our Q&A session. So we will uh, guide you through on how to upload shapefile, how to upload raster to your workspace. Um, and I also see um, Fernando uh, didn't find the workspace. I think you um, need to register first and then please um, send us your email account and we will add you to the workspace. Great, 
Thank you, D. I don't see any other hands up or questions in the chat. So we'll just pause here. Good morning, everyone. I'm just gonna jump in here for a moment. I'm getting a lot of messages from several users who don't have access yet. Um, for everyone who's messaging me, I need you to make sure to follow the steps to register on UN Biodiversity Lab first. Those can be found in the file that Andres just dropped, and then I can add you to the workspace. But until you've registered, I'm not able to use you. Um, so Andres, if you could drop that document again, that has all the information for registering and I'll continue to respond to all the different requests as I, as quickly as I can, as I'm getting several right now. Thanks everyone. Great, thank you, Annie. Yes, good to uh, make note of that, registering before trying to be added to the workspace. And I see um, Mira um, said the add new layer button didn't appear to her. Um, I have just re-invited you to the workspace. So please have a check and see if you can find this option now. And it looks like um, Abbas has asked to get access to the workspace there in the chat as well. So um, we will get to you as, as Annie can. I know she's getting quite a few requests there. So do please be patient with us as we work through getting everyone access. I don't see any other hands or questions at this moment. I'm also seeing a few people who are saying in the chat that they don't have access to the workspace, but they actually are a part of the workspace. Um, so maybe if you could walk, share your screen and walk through where exactly to find it one more time. Um, so for example, Abbas, um, who's you're writing that you don't have access to the workspace, I am seeing you as a member of the workspace. Uh, so if you can follow along with D. Uh, and see if you're able to access it following these steps. That would be great. Um, otherwise, we'll let you open your mic and maybe you can share what you're seeing and Dee can help us to troubleshoot. So Dee, over to you. Annie, just a point that it may be worth noting that people might need to refresh the, the web page once they've been added to the space. Um, that might solve some people's problems. Great, thanks. Great. Um, now we'll demonstrate again on how to find this workspace. First, please um, have a look at the top right corner of my screen here. Um, so here is the account icon. You need to make sure you have already logged in to your e UNBL account. And that email is supposed to be the same one you used for registration. So that's the information we used to add you to the workspace. And then if you, um, if you checked your account is logged in, next thing is to click on the map view on the top of the left panel. When you click on it, there will be a drop down list with um, all the workspaces that you are a member of. Sorry if my list is too long and here, um, you will see one named NASA RSET. This is the workspace we are using for today's training. And then to access the administration page, there is an 
an admin button. You need to click on it to access the administration page. That's where you will find options like um, adding new layers, new places. You may not see the option of adding users because we currently added you all as editors, um, but, it, but you will be able to see adding places and layers. So let me know if you still have problems. And when you uh, just, if you just registered, um, send any your email address and we will add you to the users list. Hope it helps. And um, Myra just said, yes, she needs to press the admin button to access it. Elizabeth can see that, great. Um, anyone has any problem? Great, thank you so much, Dee, for going through that again in real time. I'm not seeing any other questions at the moment. Maybe I'll pause um, to ensure if there's anything Annie wanted to mention, it sounds like she's getting people registered and access to the workspaces. Um, if we're good, we can move on to our next session. I think I've gotten the majority of people added. There are a couple that I'm still troubleshooting with, so I'll just continue to uh, liaise with all of you and get you added as quickly as I can. Thanks, everyone. Great. Thank you, Annie. And, and um, yeah, a reminder, just just message Annie directly in the chat if you um, continue to have any issues there. Fantastic. I'm hearing a little bit of sound. So um, I also just remind everyone to mute themselves and um, unless they have a question, then they can raise their hand and we will unmute them. So thank you. Great, so now it is time to move on to our first exercise of the day. So now I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Oscar McDermott Long from the UN Environmental Program World Conservation Monitoring Center. And Oscar is going to um, lead this segment for us. So over to you, Oscar. Good afternoon, I'm Oscar McDermott Long and I'm going to be bringing you through the first co-led exercise today, which looks at uploading a layer to your workspace. A little background information before we begin. We recognize that national data is often higher quality and better suited to countries' needs for decision-making, monitoring, and reporting. At the same time, data gaps at the national level mean that global data can offer a valuable resource to countries. We created our UNBL workspaces so that you can take advantage of the best in both national and global data. UNBL workspaces enable you to upload national data to a common repository and or connect to existing national data repositories. You can add data layers to your private workspace for visualization by your team without making the layer public. You can then visualize these data in combination with UNBL's global data layers. All data added to UMBL is maintained in your password protected workspace and hosted on secure servers operated by the UN International Computing Center. This exercise takes you through the steps to add a layer to your UMBL workspace from one of the cloud-based data repositories, the Google Earth Engine. We will all practice with the same raster layer, the Global Mountains Binary Map. And now I'm gonna bring you through the process of adding this layer. So the first thing we do is we launch UMBL and we ensure that we are signed into our workspace. And as you can see, I am here. Then what I want you to do is I want you to click on map view on the top left and I want you to select the workspace that you're going to work in. I am going to work in UMBL WCMC and I'm going to click on the admin button now here on the right hand side. You will see that you're then presented with a, a screen um, welcoming you to your admin space. And what I want you to do is click on the drop down button with home um, enabled. And I want you to click on layers. You see that you're presented with the opportunity to create a new layer. And I want you to click on this. So 
What we need to do now is we need to fill in um, the following bits of information. We need to fill in the title. Each layer needs a unique name so that you can see which layer you uploaded yourself. Because we are all working in the same workspace for this purpose, uh, of the purpose of this lab, it's extremely important to ensure that everyone uploads a layer with a different name. So we suggest to create a unique name for your layer, type the first four letters of your first and last name, followed by the phrase global mountains. So I will do this now for you. The next uh, bit of information that we need to fill in is the slug field. A slug is a unique identifier for the layer that contains only lowercase numbers and hyphens. No spaces can be used. So what we recommend is that you click on the generate a slug name and this will generate your slug based on the title that you've used for your layer. What we're going to do for now is we're going to leave included layers blank and we're going to indicate where our source um, of this layer is coming from and we're going to select Google Earth Engine or GEE. Um, <clears throat> what we need to do then is we need to indicate what type of layer it is. So we're going to indicate that it is a raster layer and we're going to select the category of this layer which we are going to call it Habitats and Ecosystems and Biomes. And we're going to click out. So in the layer description, we might put the proper title and maybe we can put in the full citation, which I'm going to copy into this space now. now I'm going to continue scrolling. You'll see that the final field that we have to input is the layer config. And this is the uh, space which indicates the source of the la layer and also how we want to style it. So I have already got um, the information I need for this space. So I'm going to click in here and I'm, oh, I haven't copied the information I need. So I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to take the last little bit and copy that again because it's on two pages for me. So what I can do now is I can click on save and view details. So we're now presented with the layer. Um, but what I need to do is I need to update the layer config that I put in because I have used a um, <laughs> just a copy and paste and I need to use the specific ID of the layer that I've created. So I want to copy this, copy, and I'm going to go back in and edit the layer config file. And you'll see here now this, this highlighted bit is the uh, pointing to the layer ID. So I'm going to update that layer ID, copy it and paste it in there, and I'm going to click save. So what we need to do then is just after we've clicked save is we need to make sure that this layer is visible. So we're going to go scroll back to the top of the page and click on the toggle bars next to published and primary so that the layer is added to the map view. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click on map view and we are going to once the page loads, we're going to click on layers. And if we type in global, we'll see here that global mountains layer appears. And if we toggle it on, we should be able to see the layer being visualized on the map. That's it for adding a, a layer to the map. Thank you very much. Great, thank you so much, Oscar. Um, so now that you have seen Oscar do this, we have about 15 minutes to do the exercise on your own. I wanna remind you that all of the steps are detailed in the lab sheet that we shared earlier. And my colleague Andres is dropping that into the chat again. We encourage you all to um, work through this on your own pace and ask questions as they come up. 
if you have a question about a step, it's likely somebody else does as well. So don't hesitate to um, raise your hand or put your question into the chat. And um, we will go through some questions. I see there are a few here already um, and give you some time to work through these questions as well. So after we um, have some time here for questions and allow you all to work through, uh, we will move on to our next um, part of the training. So I'm seeing a question here in the chat about an error. Um, it says parse error on line four in layer configuration. Um, is there anything that you can do to address that, Oscar? Thanks, Amber. Um, what I can do is I can make sure that everyone is uh, working um, off the right um, config. So I'm going to just paste in the config that I've used that everyone has seen working into the chat now. So if you are having a problem, um, please just copy and paste what I've been using and then uh, see if that if your problem maintains. Great, thank you so much, Oscar. Yeah, it looks like um, that might be a similar issue that folks are having um, with line four. So um, do please check the um, code that Oscar will, will drop there into the chat. And we'll try to work through that. Oscar, I think you accidentally just sent it to me. Um, so if you just click send to everyone, then that should go in. I'm also trying to copy it, but it's a little slow on my side. Thank you, Annie. Apologies, yes, I did. I have now just added it to everyone in the, uh, everyone should be able to see it in the chat now. So thanks, Annie. Great, thank you. I'm seeing it now as well, Oscar. So I, I think that might actually be most of the questions I'm seeing in the chat. Um, let's see here. Um, there is a question from Virginia in Spanish. Cassandra, do you want to read that or is it about the workspace access? Claro que sí, Amber. En, nos pregunta Virginia si hacemos el ejercicio. Virginia is asking us if we should uh, carry out the exercise in the NASA RSET uh, space that we created or should she create her own? Um, if she could carry out the exercise in the NASA RSET um, space, that would be great. Um, as I detailed in the kind of um, the, the video that we saw before, uh, it's about making sure that your layer has a unique name. Um, so make sure that you can identify the layer that you've uploaded. Thank you, Oscar. Great. Fernando also has a question about the SLD value on the raster symbolizer color map. Is that a similar um, code issue or is that a separate question, Oscar? No, it's the same uh, code issue. And I think actually it's been solved by the, um, uh, the, the uh, code that I've input into the chat. It seems okay. like an indentation issue with the copy and paste directly from the PDF as far as I can see. Okay, great, thank you. Okay. It looks like the new code is working. I'm seeing a few folks uh, mention that. Thank you, um, Shirley and Fernando. Yeah, the copying and paste. Okay, so um, the, there is a question Bonjour. from Abbas about um, how the layer description was made. Bonjour. Sorry, there was just an announcement happening at my end. Um, I so the the layer description is a um, is no GC standard. Um, it's called a stylized layer description, and basically we are following the the rules set out by that standard. Um, and you can go and um, find a little bit more about it by just searching SLD format in Google, and it'll come up with lots of advice for you. 
and type in OGC as well. Great, thank you, Oscar. And it looks like um, Asi is trying to ask a question potentially oh, in maybe. French. If you if you'd like to unmute yourself and go ahead and ask, that would be fine. Now, Je, I, I I think the question um, is in the chat. Donc, Asi, bonjour. Je vais lire votre question. Je ne sais pas si vous nous entendez. Good morning. I am going to read your question. I'm going to read it in French so our interpreters can interpret into English. I think the question was for D. Could you uh, tackle again how to uh, register, how to log the layer when it has been created? Would you mind very much taking it from there, D? Did you hear us? Thank you, Marion. Thank you, Marion. Is, is that a question for me? That was a question for you. That uh, was a question uh, okay. for you. Can yes. you share my screen? Uh, Merci. Uh, if you're asking how to load the layer, um, I assume you are still at the administration page, right? Um, now, click on the top um, of the left panel, the NASA R set. And then um, the second option here, let me um, zoom in, is called map view. When you click on it, um, the map will return to the map view and you will see um, a similar page like my here. Um, and make sure you have activated your workspace. To activate it, still click on that view and then there is a workspace named NASA R set. Make sure this checkbox is green uh, or it's blue, um, green or blue, and then you'll be able to see the layers um, you uploaded. I actually already see eight layers, so at least eight of our participants already finished this task. Uh, let me load one and see if it works well. Yeah, the map is loading successfully. Great job, everyone. Um, okay, so I'll turn it back to Oscar. Thanks, Dee. I see actually there are a couple of questions in the chat about what to copy from the layer config um, that has been posted in the, in the chat. Please copy the whole layer config as I've copied and pasted it and as Marion has copied and pasted it into the chat. Um, and then as, as was highlighted in the video, maybe I could share my screen. Um, two seconds. Share. Um, can everyone see my screen now? Yes. Fantastic. So what we see here is the layer config file um, that has been copied into the chat. But what we need to make sure is done is that the, um, the ID of the layer that you have created, so this ID here, is copied. And then what we want to make sure is that we then edit this config file. We come to line seven in the config file and we edit the section just before the bracket said, which um, you need to point to the ID of your layer. Um, and then so you press that and then you press save. And then that should make sure that it is linking to the appropriate layer for you. Great, thank you, Oscar. It looks like we maybe have a question from Esteban in Spanish. Cassandra, could you read that one for us? Leerla, por favor. Of course, Esteban was asking about which part needs to be replaced with the layer ID. Um, so that's what I was just going through um, just a moment ago. So maybe I will share my screen again and, and re-show it again. Two seconds. Sharing my screen. So we see the config file again here. 
we see at the very top of the screen, we have the ID of the layer that we are currently editing in our own workspace. So this is the unique ID for the layer that you have uploaded. You need to copy this ID, copy it, and then you come back down to the layer config, you click edit. And then what you do is you come to line seven in your layer config file, and it's directly after the tiles uh, forward slash you copy and uh, paste that uh, what the ID that you have just copied and replace the ID that was already existing in that um, file that you've copied across. And then what you need to do is just click save. And that should link the uh, layer config directly to the layer that you have uploaded specifically. Great, thank you, Oscar. I see a few other comments and questions um, from Elizabeth and Osama about um, line four. So um, that was an issue with the PDF. So if you could just copy and paste the code from the chat here, that will hopefully solve your, your problem there. Yeah, thank you, Amber. Just um, so everyone's aware, this is the first time we've run this training. So the, the issue with the PDF copy is uh, something we didn't catch. So essentially what's happening is that there is an indentation error as a result of the copy and paste from the PDF document. So if you could just copy and paste the config file that was copied into the chat a few times, and I believe Marion has copied it above. Great, thank you, Oscar. Um, and I think Maria had a similar question to the one you just addressed. Oscar with a um, error in line sec six and the ID number doesn't appear for me. I don't know if there's anything else you want to mention about that. It's slightly difficult without being able to see exactly what's happening on their screen, but I would suggest that you try and copy the whole um, the whole config file that was copied into the chat rather than a section of it, just to make sure that you um, have it in the correct format and all the indentations are as they should be. Um, I can see in the, um, the config um, text that Marion has copied in above that the ID does appear in that space. Um, so if you're still having problems, please maybe message me directly and I can um, talk to you about what is going on. Great, thank you, Oscar. And it looks like Marianne has copied and pasted it again. So thank you for that. Okay, well, it looks like the questions here have slowed down um, and I don't see any hands raised. So I think we'll, we'll move on to the next and second exercise. Um, if you do have questions, just continue to ask them in the chat and we'll get to them as we can. Um, so thanks everyone. Now I'd like to hand the floor back over to Dee. Hello again. The next exercise, we will practice uploading new places to your workspace. So far, this function has been the most frequently used one by workspace users. People find it very useful, and by people I mean me, because you can freely upload any of your places of interest, for example, your study areas that are not available on the public platform, or your national boundaries that might be slightly different with the UN boundary map we're using, the range of your local communities, nature conservancies, and so on. And you can use the places together with the global data sets on UNBL. The public platform can automatically help you to calculate the eight dynamic metrics within your places. And you can also clip the global data sets at the range of your places and download the layers directly from UNBL. As you may see on my screen, I just uploaded a bounding box as my study area and calculated the global indicators within it. This will also be the file we use for practice today. If you haven't downloaded the file already, 
my colleague Andres is dropping the link to the chat. Please click on the link to download the file to your computer. While some of you are doing so, before we get officially started, I want to share more technical formatting requirements on place files in case you'll be using it in the future. So for place files, we suggest you use single feature polygon for each location and the file size should be under two megabytes the smaller the file size the faster the system can process it and then for the file format please make sure it's geojson the file can be converted using gis software as well as command line or r and we recommend you limit the file accuracy to no more than six decimal places. When you reduce the file accuracy, you will also find the file size will be largely reduced. And for the coordination reference system, please make sure it's WGS84. Um, and I think that's mainly it. Now let's get started. Again, please make sure you have logged in and you can find this workspace named NASA or set in the map view dropdown menu. And then we click on admin to access the admin page. Now I'll click on the home tab to expand the dropdown menu, and then select places. Click on create new place button. Then on this new place page, we are going to fill in all these following information. The first one, title. Even though we're all using the same shape file, to be able to identify which one is yours, we are giving it a unique name here. My colleague comes up with this brilliant idea of using your own name as unique identifier of the places. So please type the first four letters of both your first and last name, followed by the face Serengeti. In my example, it will be the John Serengeti. And then place type. You can expand the drop down menu and select an appropriate class. In our case, I think it's more like a study area that we personally identified. The next one is layer slug. A slug is a unique identifier for the system to recognize different layers. So it has to be different and that contains only lowercase letters, numbers, or heap ends. No space can be used. Same here for the exercise. We're going to use the first four letters of our first and last name, followed by the face Senren. For example, my slug here is the Jan Senren. And then let's upload our place file. Click on choose file and then select the place file we just downloaded named Serengeti Bonding Box Joe Jason. When you upload it, the save and view details will turn blue. Click on it we will be able to view the place file we just uploaded in this preview box. Now scroll back to the top of the page and click on published to go, then featured to go at the top right of my screen. This will ensure the new place you just uploaded will be added to the place list in your workspace map view. And now let's return to map view and give it a check. Click on NASA R set here to expand the drop down menu, then click on map view to return to the map view. And please make sure your workspace is activated. To activate it, 
click on this checkbox at the left of the workspace name. And now in the left panel, under the featured places, I can see the place file I just uploaded with my name in the title. And when I click on it, the map will automatically zoom in to the place. Now, if you would like to view global datasets within this place, click on Map View drop-down menu again, and then activate the checkbox of the one named UNBL. That's our public platform. And when you click on it, there will be eight dynamic metrics automatically calculated for your place including biodiversity, intactness index, carbon density, enhanced vegetation index, global land cover, monthly fire activity, protected areas, coverage, human footprint, and tree cover loss. These summarized statistics can be very useful to report the state and changes of nature in your study area. If you want to view this layer, click show on map here to load these maps to the map view. You can select the year of the layer you want to view. And if you no longer want to view it, click on remove layer to remove it from the screen. Great, above are the steps of uploading new places to the workspace. Now we will give you a few minutes to do this exercise on your own. While you're doing it, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat or raise your hand. Me and my colleagues will be here to help you. Great, thank you, Dee. So now that you have seen Dee work through this, as with the last exercise, we have about 15 minutes for you to work through this on your own. So um, about until 10:15 um, Eastern time. And again, I want to remind you that all of the steps are detailed in the lab sheet that we showed earlier. And my colleague Andres is dropping that into the chat again. So please do just work at your own pace and ask questions as they come up. Um, please raise your hand if you'd like to use your microphone or um, you can type your questions into the chat and we will get to them as we move through. So it looks like we had a question from Innocent, but I think Annie um, responded to that in the chat about going back to the um, exercise. We have, we do have a question from Mamuka. How do we do this for our own country rather than the Serengeti only? Great question. Um, this Serengeti Getty is only a test file we give you to uh, show all the steps need to upload your own uh, places of interest. So if you have a shape file of your own country, you can also follow the steps. First, convert it to GeoJSON format and make sure the file size isn't uh, very large and perfect, uh, will be perfect if it's under two megabytes and then try to see the same steps to add this file through the places administration page. Um, you can give it a try now if uh, you have the file with you. Thank Great, you. Thank and you. I see a hand raised from Mamuka. Um, Mamuka, the floor is yours. Uh, uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I, I recall on the first exercise, it was possible to uh, see the default countries, okay, okay. because I don't have the JSON, uh, GeoJSON file handy. I have a shape file, but not that. Uh, I'm not sure I can do this very quickly. Is it possible to use the systems uh, country, country boundary? 
Um, yes, so if you only have shapefile, um, do you have any GIS software like QGIS or ArcGIS? You can convert the file format to GeoJSON. Or you can also send the file to me and I convert it for you. Um, no, 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 no problem with it. I, I will do this later, but uh, I re recall from the first exercise that there was possibility to look for the, the countries. And like, I don't know, I'm from Georgia, I just wanted to. Is it possible to use that option? Or in this case, we only can do this with the, uh, the shape. Yes, it's, it's possible to use this option. Oh. Um, thank you. Hope that answers your question. If you uploaded your country's file, I, I can share my screen and uh, we appreciate your um, your work. I, think I see another the, hand the, raised. I just think, uh, Dee, just Mamuka's question is more that can they use the kind of uh, national boundaries that we have loaded previously under the places on the platform? So the answer is yes, Mamuka, but the, the goal of this exercise is primarily to upload your own specific place. So that's why D was focusing on the uploading element. Okay, thank you, clear. But now we use the Serengeti, yeah? Or, or we do the country. You can upload yes. your own space, but we are using the Serengeti, yes. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mamuka, for your question. Um, it looks like we have another question from Fernando. Um, it says, I uploaded a place name Coquis, but when I try to calculate the metrics, it says there's no data available. Um, let me have a check of the place file you uploaded. Um, I actually didn't see a place named uh, Co Co Cocos at the NASA RSET workspace. Do you, uh, would you mind to uh, point as the workspace you uploaded or um, check again if you have successfully saved it? Um, in that case, if the metrics didn't calculate, it might be you're not uploading a Polygon file, um, I guess, but um, I will know more uh, when I see the file you uploaded. Yeah, it so looks like Fernando, Fernando just... might have uh, uploaded it to his own workspace. Oh. And so now um, yes. he's adding it to the RSET one. So I think that might have been the issue. Okay. Uh, let me know uh, when you still have the issue um, after uploaded to the NASA RSET workspace. Great, thank you, Dee. Um, there's a, another question in the chat from Osama. For the statistical data sets, are they downloadable? Are they downloadable along with the layers we developed? Um, yes, the I, if it's about the dynamic metrics, um, it's downloadable, and maybe I can demonstrate how to do that. Um, so here, I already see um, 18, 18 um place files uploaded already. Um, let me find. So when I upload this file, if you want to download the calculated statistics, just click on this arrow, arrow icon and then choose the format you want to download it as. Usually we use CSV. Um, and when you click on it, the statistics will be downloaded to your computer. Uh, also, if you want to use this bounding box to clip any, um, any raster layers we have on the public platform or the data you, or the layers you uploaded to your workspace, click on the three dot icon at the right of the layer name. Um, I'm gonna zoom it in so you can see it clearer. Click on clip and export layers. Then uh, you'll be able to click the global data sets um, within the range of the place you uploaded and download it to your uh, computer. Hope that answers your question. Great, thank you, Dee. It looks like that did and it was helpful. So thank you, Osama, for, for mentioning that. Um, 
There's a question from Abbas. Um, the question is, how can I create the map and upload it? Um, thanks for your question. Uh, by the map, so when you upload the place, it needs to be a um, spatial file, GIS um, shape file. If you have the file, um, you can convert it to GeoJSON format and upload to the workspace. Um, if you, uh, if the map you're talking about is only in um, a picture format, um, then you need an extra step to digitalize it to a um, special um, uh, GIS file. Great, thank you, Dee. It looks like Fernando has now uploaded his um, file to the RSET um, workspace. So that might be something to, to check on. Thank you, Fernando. Yes, um, I'm looking at this file and let me see. Um, I can see the file fine and it's um, a correct shape file. And let me try to load it to my map view and see if it works. It might be helpful if you uh, share your screen so we can follow along if that was okay. Oh, right. Thank you. thought I already did, sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, I also see no data available. Um, let me see. Let me try to load these layer on the map and see if they actually covered this place. It might be... Um, The other um, well, thing to point out here, Dee, is that we have a lot of people uploading a lot of um, uh, uh, shape, uh, shape files at once, and it may be that the um, the uh, server that is doing the, the calculations of these statistics on the fly is being worked hard at the moment, so it might be that this will take a little while to populate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that might be the reason, because um, I can see the layers have covered this region. Um, let's see. Yes, I think you're doing it correctly. Maybe let me recalculate it and see if anything will change. Hey, hi, hello. Excuse, excuse me for the intervention. Uh, last week I did this, this, this exercise, and um, the thing was that I had the same problem. I didn't. It didn't make the metrics. I don't know why. If the if the zone is very small. In their place where you see the recalculation of the of the places, I have like um, like V6, like it, it's a try, yeah, their place matrix down. I done that uh, a few times. I have like V6, V7 in some cases, like he's trying to do it, but I don't know why it, it doesn't uh, show the metrics, but thank you. Great, thanks, um, thanks for explaining. Yeah, thanks for letting us know. Um, I think for this case, we will um, report to our developer team and see what might be the issue. Currently, I think the file is in the correct format and uh, we are uploading it in correct steps. Thank you. Uh, I will feed back to you um, after I have a, com I have a firm answer. Great, thank you, T. And I think um, we, I don't see any more questions or hands raised. So I think we can go ahead and um, move on to the um, next portion of the um, exercise, the next exercise here. Um, so yeah, we'll move on to our um, colon exercise three. Hi, our last exercise today is to create collections of the multiple places in your workspace. The collections are very helpful when you want to view multiple places in parallel and want to compare the, the summarized statistics from global indicators on UNBL. Now I will demonstrate how to create place collections step by step. 
And the first thing, maybe I don't need to repeat, but please make sure you have logged into your UNBL account. Also activated the training workspace named NASA RSET. Now at the left channel, you're able to see collections. Click on create new. The next thing is to give your place collection a name. Since we are all using one shared workspace, Let's use our phone name here for our places collection. So we'll be able to know which one is ours. And in my case, I will name my collection as Di Zhang. Now under select a workspace, there is a full list of workspaces that you're a member of. For this exercise, we will all select this one named NASA RSET then click on create collection now on the left panel you can add places to your collection when you click on the three dots icon at the right of the collection name you can also rename it or delete this collection we will start with adding places before our session today i have pre-uploaded a few municipalities from colombia now click add places then expand the drop down list these are the list of the places you can add to your collection please select the following places mohaya boydo whiten boydo lopez solano and dame my colleague andres will also drop the place list to the chat and now we click on save. When you saved this collection, the places boundaries will appear together. Now we will activate the public platform and use the global data on UNBL to calculate the dynamic metrics within your place collection. Click on the drop down menu of metric then select the one named protected areas after you click on the metrics a comparison table will pop up with the zonal statistics in those municipalities with the area being protected you can also change the order from low to high or high to low the coverage of protected areas in these municipalities as well as the area unprotected. If you want to view the protected areas locations on the map, click on layers and select WDPA protected areas. And then the map will load to the map view and you can view especially where the protected areas are located in these places. This collection function is very convenient when you want to compare the data in different places. For example, the tree cover loss happened in different provinces or the biodiversity intactness among different national parks in your country. Next, we will practice downloading this data in CSV format. To do this, click on the arrow icon at the top right of the comparison table then select csv alternatively you can click on download metric data files in the drop down list select protect areas and then select csv format click download to download the file the downloaded data file will contain the summarized statistics of protected area coverage, both terrestrial and marine, of the places you selected in the collections. Now we'll leave you a few minutes to do this exercise on your own. Please also think about how you could use this function to support your work. We would love it if you can share your thoughts with the team and your fellow participants in the chat box. We're also happy to take any questions.
Thank you, Dee. And as with the other exercises, we have some time now for you to work on this on your own. Um, we have about eight minutes to work on this on your own and um, continue to ask questions in the chat or raise your hand. Um, we have the detailed lab sheet that we shared earlier that Andres will drop it to the chat again. I think our fellow participants are doing very well because I already see a lot of collections coming up uh, and maybe I can um, select a few to demonstrate. This one is from Luis. So he selected three places um, and let's see, when we click um, any metrics, the data will automatically calculate it for the place he selected. Um, you can ch change the order. And then you can also download the metrics together. See, I don't know if it's worth highlighting um, the issue that we have with um, the number of workspaces in a, uh, sorry, the number of collections in a workspace at this stage. Um, we think that there may be a limitation on the number of collections in a workspace. Um, so it may be that uh, some of you have problems following this along live, so apologies if you do. Great, thank you, Oscar, for mentioning that. Um, oh, there's a question from uh, Gerardo that I, Annie answered, but uh, maybe it's worth repeating. Um, um, they asked if the workspace will be available for the next few days so everyone can recall on the exercises. And yes, um, the workspace will be open until May 18th when the final homework is due. Um, so hopefully everyone will be able to work through things um, in the next few days if you weren't able to follow along with us here. Um, there's also a question from Osama about what is the appropriate citation format for the derived CSB outcomes to use in a research report? Great question. Um, I can also share my screen to demonstrate where you can find these citations. So for example, um, if like, let me randomly collect one collection. Maybe my computer is a little bit slow, but let me try accessing here. Okay, it's loaded. So these metrics, uh, these eight metrics are the uh, dynamic metrics we offer on the public platform. When you uh, click on it, it will appear as a summarized table. Uh, but then if you want um, to view the single layers, click on layers and uh, in the search bar, type the name of the metrics you just loaded. And then you're able to see the layer. Uh, when you load it to the map view, a layer info icon um, will appear at the layer legend. When you click on it, you will see all the metadata and the layer description of the, the layer the metric is using. And under suggested citation, here is the full citation we suggest you to use when you're citing the uh, CSV data downloaded. Also, um, if you're not looking at collections, when you click on any single places, when the um, dynamic metrics appears as a summarized statistics, there is also layer info uh, at the right of the layer name. And when you click on it, um, the layer info on the layer info page, there is also the full citation listed on this layer page. I hope it helps. 
The, just one point on that as well, it might be worth also citing the, um, the layer used for the boundaries. So if you've used, for example, Gaul or Gadam to define the boundaries of your country, you should specify the layers that you're using for um, the uh, clip as well. Yes, and um, you can also mention you generated this map or you downloaded this data from UNBL. We offered the full um, citation format as an example in our homework um, document. So you can uh, reference that as well. Great, thank you, Oscar and Dee. Um, it looks like we do have a question from Esteban in the chat. Sandra, um, would you mind reading that? Right, Amber. D has already dealt with that question by saying that in the homework uh, document, you'll have all of the information for the citation, in which uh, is a recommendation as to how to do it. And Fernando asked in Spanish whether after May 18, there will still be access to the platform for queries and uh, research for research purposes. And Annie has answered that you can uh, create your own workspace so that you can continue to use all those functionalities uh, above and beyond this specific uh, workspace, which is just for this course. Great. Thank you. Cassandra, and thank you, um, Oscar and Dee, for uh, all of your answers to the questions here. Um, I don't see any more currently, um, so I think maybe we will move on to our final piece today, which is um, handing it over to Dee for a reminder of the homework assignment that you have for this lab. Great work, everyone. Um, okay, so now we enter the last session. Um, so before I start to introduce our homework today, I want to take this chance to really say thank you for joining our training events through the last four weeks. Um, it's a long-term commitment, I know. We are very excited. Um, well, if you find the UN Biodiversity Lab helpful, we initially created this platform to support policymakers in their commitments to the CBD. As we evolve, we are seeing increasing numbers of different use cases the platform can support. So we want to hear from you. Next slide, please. So this homework is for you to reflect on how you think the platform can support your work moving forward. Based on the functionalities we explored during this lab today, please feel free to cover these following questions in your answer. First, how do you think you could use an UNBL workspace to support your projects? And then what members in your organization could most benefit from accessing a workspace? For example, they can be people with no GIS background, they can be uh, community members, um, government employees, etc. And also, with the functions we shared today, what else functions would you like to see in the UNBL in the future? We might improve the platform with your suggestions. Next slide, please. Please summarize, uh, please summarize your response and submit to our support email with the subject homework assignment to UNBL Advanced Lab 2. And to receive your certificate, you must submit this assignment before 18th May, so two weeks from now. And optionally, we really encourage you to tweet your thoughts on Twitter with the hashtag UNBiodiversityLab. You can also tag our official account for a chance to be featured. When we see your tweet, um, we are very likely to retweet and let more people see it. And last but not least, if you still have any questions, please feel free to email us. We'll be there to support you. With that, thank you all over again, and I'll hand it back to Amber. Great, thank you, Dee, and, and yes, um, just a, a huge thank you to everyone for participating in this lab series. 
Um, and in particular, these, these advanced labs. Um, it was really great to engage with you all and hear your questions and, and see you working on everything along the way. Um, it's really, really fantastic to see. So um, this was the final session of our training series, UN, using UN Biodiversity Lab to monitor the pulse of the planet. Um, so as a reminder, here's the contact information for myself um, and my colleagues um, at RSET and UNDP. So feel free to follow up with us for any further questions that you may have um, as you're working through all of these things. So I also want to mention that you can find all of the information about the um, training um, that includes uh, the recordings of the videos, the links to download materials, um, and everything else here on the um, RSET website shown on the slide. Um, my colleague Andres is also dropping these into the chat. So please do remember to send your homework assignment two in to be eligible for your certificate of completion for this advanced lab. Um, and we're so thankful to all of you for your participation today and um, throughout the training series. And we hope that you are able to use um, the UN Biodiversity Lab for your work in the future. Um, so thank you everyone. Have a nice morning, evening, day, whatever time it is where you all are. And we hope to see you all again soon. Thank you.